Many a hot Indian night, my dear old Lancers and I have whiled away at poker. I've been out, been out of touch with the game lately, Harlow, which may account for the fact that the card seems somewhat obstinate. Obstinate? I thought they did everything but push the money toward you. <laughs> well, it's keeping it in the family, Jennings, you know, all in the family. A sort of domestic jackpot, you might say. Of course, once the dear children are married, everything I have is yours. And Everything you have is mine. You mustn't let your generosity sweep away your reason, sir. <laughs> Isn't it lovely the way my husband has taken Mr. Jennings? To his heart, I mean, of course. Just like two boys, the way they like to gamble on everything. Tell me, Miss Carton, why do you call your husband the Sahib? Sir? Oh, that's Indian for gentleman, you know. It's such a distinguished man. But what does he do now? He's an economist, part of the brain trust, you know. Labor conditions, wages, unemployment. The Saab doesn't believe in unemployment. He doesn't. He thinks it should all be done away with. How interesting. He says the only way to do away with unemployment is to do away with employment. If nobody worked, there couldn't be any unemployment. And so the Saab hasn't done a speck of work for years. Passive resistance, you know. Gandhi. How clever of him. My son feels the same way about it. He's terribly clever, too. And so charming. And soon to be your son, too, Mrs. Jennings. This night, these stars, this purple sea, why were they planned? With what in view but for a setting of our love? Mercy, Richard. You do think up the prettiest poetry. Honey, you just make me want to cry. <laughs> Love and tears go hand in hand, Adler. That's life. I was just thinking how romantic our marriage is going to be. We were just made for each other, weren't we, honey? We were, Adler. We are each other's destiny. <laughs> what I 
I do not understand why your brother's marrying that girl. She's very ugly and she's very stupid. Oh, he loves it, Duncan. Love is strange. Did you say you had something you want to show me? I did that. Our engagement ring, I sent for it. Oh, isn't that wonderful? I can hardly wait. I hope you weren't too extravagant. It's no a valuable ring, but it belonged to the McGregors. That was my mother's name. <laughs> Why, it's lovely. I love sentiment. So much better than all the diamonds. I'd like to give you diamonds, George John. And pearls, too. Would you really? But I'm no a wealthy man. Oh, now, don't try to make me think that, Duncan. You sure they're the Carltons, Sergeant? Positive, Lieutenant. The Monte Carlo police sent photographs. Four of a kind. And the kind we don't want around here. Come on. I have advised Mr. Jennings not to worry about this check. I'm thunderstruck, sir. Utterly thunderstruck. Did I say thunderstruck? Yes, dear. Tell me, Colonel. You have never been in the Bengal Lancers, have you? My dear sir, when my regiment was quartered in India... In fact, you have never been in India. These reports from Canada of your earlier life. Sweethearts of the Bengal Lancers, with the original Toronto cast. If this is some low jest of yours, sir... What is the proposition? The municipality would feel a distinct gratitude if you would be kind enough to continue your operations elsewhere. If I were so disposed, sir, I would consider your remarks insulting. Uh, what my father is trying to say is that we would be very pleased to cooperate with the municipality, but unfortunately, we have no money. In fact, thanks to your interference, you find us completely destitute. Mr. Jennings thought as much and asked me to present you with these tickets to London, with his compliments. Colonel Anthony Carlton, Bengal Lancers, at your service. You haven't changed much since those days, darling. <laughs> That's all right. Eh? Only your hair's really getting grey now instead of being wig. But when you jumped up just then, you looked just like you used to in the second act when you talked to Lady Gretzley. Remember? Well, beautiful thing that, beautiful. And you, Lady Gretzley, rest assured that I, Colonel Anthony Carlton, will so and so and so and so and so, -and -so with my life against these villainous natives until my so and so and so and so and so. -and -so Bengal Lancers arrive. Colonel Anthony Carlton. How we love that name. When we first rehearsed the play that night in Toronto, mm. we've sort of taken the name for granted now. Do you remember how they always cheered my speech at the end of the second act? So, 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 so. Forward, march! <laughs> Splendid play. Well, it had its moments, my dear. I had its moments. Mm. He's yeah. very well known in his empty to the girls of Mandalay. He was yeah. a captain of something out here. So bold, so brave, so gay. gay. He's a la, 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 favorite LG. How oh, he made the bar maids fly. He was a friend of the most LG. And the picture he kept in was the little black guy. Tell me just one thing, please. What have you to sing about? They're getting sentimental. Come on. Let's get out of here. The workings of the side mind are a deep, dark mystery. Yeah. Mom is too. Three million dollars tossed away. And they sing. And we nearly had it right in our hands if the Saad had been content with three million. But no, he had to have that extra 4,500. And get us in a jam beside. Rick, did you say goodbye to Adela? Saying goodbye to three million dollars was all the goodbye I could stand. I just wish we knew what we're going to do now. I've never been so hungry in my life.
By the way, didn't I see you with a new ring on last night? I thought perhaps when we got on the train, we might be able to swap it for a couple of chops. Well, that ring wasn't mine. I just borrowed it for the evening. Too bad. Oh, what's the matter with us anyway? Why can't we ever own anything? Nobody ever owns anything except nice, dull people. And they always get on to us sooner or later. Yeah, we're too well dressed. Mm, that won't last long. I doubt if there's a dressmaker left in Paris who'll stake us anymore. Mommy will always find your clothes somehow, don't worry. Bravo, bravo. <laughs> <laughs> she thinks we're sweethearts. <laughs> uh, Rick. Uh. Did you ever know anybody who married for love? I mean, where? Where somebody who didn't have any money married somebody who didn't have any money. What did you say they married for? Well, for love. You know. No. Do you think people like that are ever happy? Anything particular in mind? No, I was just thinking. Well, as Mommy and Saab, they seem happy enough, and I can't think when they've ever had any money. Oh, they're different, though, poor darling. How? Oh, both a little balmy. I mean, just normal people. People who work for a living. What are you getting at? What's happened to you, anyway? Why? What do you mean? Well, what are you getting so soft about? Soft? Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. It's only... Only... Only what? Only... I didn't even say goodbye. Oh, you're not in love with that Scotsman, are you? Well, how could I be in love with him? He hasn't any money. Well, I can't think what you have to cry about. Oh, well, neither can I. <laughs> I wonder how long it takes a person to starve to death. It just depends. I've known some to drop off in a fortnight. Who do you think will last longer, Mommy or Saab? Oh, Mommy. I think the Saab will. He's more optimistic. Uh, Mommy's tougher. The Saab's a better bluffer, though. Yeah, he'll overplay his hand like he does his cards, and he'll be dead before he knows it. This way, sir. Police, cheating at cards, fortune hunters, Bengal Lancer. Oh. Oh. Oh! Come here. Why, why, hello, Duncan. Where did you come from? And don't try to be offhand with me, Georgian. I'm very, very angry. I had to take a flying machine to catch you, and I cannot afford to hire flying machines to chase you about. Well, nobody asked you to chase me about. You're a daft and undependable female. Don't you dare address me that way, Duncan. <laughs> Stand still and listen to me. We're going to be married to each other. We're not going to be married to each other. I don't care if your father does cheat at cards. I forgive you. You forgive me? Your brother's a worthless fortune hunter. But I forgive you because you're only daft and I can cure you. You can't cure me. I mean, I'm just as worthless as they are. You're not. You're a good girl, Georgian, and you promised to marry me. Yes. And you know why? Why? Because if Richard married Adler, we would have had three million dollars and we all could have lived on it. That's why. You're a hysterical woman. I'm not hysterical. I... I... I'm just hungry. Oh, I'm... I'm very sorry. Come along, I'll get you some dinner. <laughs> All right, I'll go get Mommy and Sive and Richard What? And... Dine with that family? I wouldn't be seen dead with them. And I wouldn't be seen dead with you, even if I was starving. All right, you don't have to. All right, well, don't follow me about. Just go away and leave me alone. Aye, once and for all.
Won't you come in? It's, uh, it, it's lonely at night, isn't it? Yes. I don't like to see night come. Do you? Well, I don't think I ever noticed. You're so young. When you're old, night comes too soon. Always. Seen trouble. It's my mother. Oh. She had to have an operation. Oh, my dear. Tell me. Well, she she's so tired and, and the train's so crowded, there's no room for it to lie down. You see, we're second class. And here I am alone in this whole compartment. Oh, you must bring her here. Could I? Of course. Well, it, it's all been rather difficult. I mean, with the side, too. That's my father. He can't help much. He was gassed, you know, in the war. Oh, you must bring him, too. Oh, may I really? Of course. That's awfully good of you. Oh, it's good of you to trust me. It's so rarely we have the privilege of helping one another. You try to look hungry, Rick. She may take the hint. You mean to say I don't look hungry? Oh, dear. What kind of an operation did I have? Any kind you like, but don't offer to show the scar. Don't you think Mommy ought to lean on me? It, it makes me nicer. Yeah. All right. And you were gassed in the war, you know, Sarge. I imagine I sort of wheezed. <gasps> Here we are. Now, don't overplay your hand, any of you. Trust me, my friend. A new friend. Oh. My name is Fortune, Miss Ellen Fortune. Miss Fortune? Silly name, isn't it? Everybody makes jokes about it. I do myself. Fine historic name. Not a subject for jesting. Uh, allow me to introduce my wife, ma'am. My daughter. I know. My son. Husband. And your servant, Colonel Anthony Carlton, <clears throat> late of the Bengal Lancers. <clears throat> The Bengal lances, how splendid. And yet the wretched government refuses him a pension and lets his family starve. If only he hadn't gone back to the war after that dreadful wound. Gas, Mommy, gas. Gas. Oh, gas, too, of course. Don't be absurd, George Ann. Did you think I had forgotten? If I have a breath left to give my country, he used to say, he's never been right since. <laughs> And then your operation, on top of everything. Yes, and so expensive, too. But they would take me to the Riviera. Now, Mommy, you know it isn't good for you to talk so much. Don't overdo it. It meant selling our little house and poor Richard's coming down from Oxford. The most brilliant man of his year, they said. Didn't they, darling? I don't care what they said. I don't care that for Oxford. Just as long as you're all right, Mommy. If you could only force yourself to eat something, Mommy. In Little Women, the children call their mother Mommy. I think the name does suit me. I don't know where the absurd children got it. Saib, of course, means genteel in India. The children were born there, poor darlings, somewhere in the Himalayas. A dreadful place. What with the ayahs and the whatnots howling around in the... whatever you call them. Mommy. Are you sure you couldn't force yourself to eat something? Oh, no, it would choke me. I'm sure it would. Oh. Would it help if I ate something with you? It might. I'd do anything to please you, dear boy. I think we should all make the effort. If Mommy should see us all eating, it might uh, tempt her. Mm -hmm. Of course, you'll be our guest, ma'am. Oh, no, no, please. This is my compartment. I insist you must be my guest. <laughs> so often I've tried to imagine parties like this when I might be with friends, celebrating with them on birthdays. My little girl's going to have a birthday this year. Let's say it's her birthday now, tonight. <laughs> Just 20-odd years ago today, 
somewhere in dear old Ireland. <laughs> well, I had thought twenty odd years ago that my little girl would come out in a French railway carriage. No French right. pretending, it's a birthday. Uh, but, but, if I had pretended twenty odd years ago that my little girl would be born in a French railway carriage, Can I... Can I help you, darling? If I had pretended twenty odd years ago that I would give birth to a little French railway carriage, again, I'd have shot myself. You must forgive the sound. He lives in a little world all his own. <laughs> <laughs> what fun. You're all so young. So young in heart. Like John Dickey. Won't you have some champagne with us, Miss Fortune? What a shame. Oh, oh, forgive me. I was just thinking of the hundreds of bottles in the big house at home. Just gathering dust. Really, ma'am? Hundreds of bottles? There. I'm not going to think of that lonely old house now. This is the first real party I've ever had. All my life, I've had to live quite simply. And now that I have money enough to do everything I want, I... I really don't quite know how to start. And you're traveling alone, ma'am? Yes, yes, I'm quite alone. Oh, I've seen many lovely things on this little jaunt. But I've had to see them alone. And after all, we see them best, really, through the eyes of those we love. Wasn't it Rossetti who said something like that somewhere? Beauty. Without the beloved is a sword through the heart. Why, uh, I don't remember. So you see, this has been a rather sad journey until now. You've made this my happiest day. <coughs> Delighted. Pleasure is all ours. I raise my glass for the first time in my life, gladly, to Miss Fortune. seems to have caught on fire. I wouldn't lie around in there too long if I were you. No. 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 Where is she? She's dead. She isn't dead. Well, I don't think she's even hurt. Well, I, I thought for a moment. Poor old girl. Come on, let's get her out of here. Can you carry her? Uh, give me a hand. I'm sure you're not hurt, my dear. I don't think so, sir. I don't know how you're supposed to feel after a train wreck. Cold wind. Rather. See if you can find some whiskey for us. Keep her warm until I get back. Where have you been? Are you all right? How did you get out? On my two feet there. Very adequate. I've hunted through the whole train for you. If anything had happened. What have you got there? This is an old lady. 
You were being very good to her. I'm not. I'm... I'm trying to keep warm. You've given her your coat. What of it? Well, you'd... You'd be warmer if you'd kept it yourself. Will you stop trying to make me something I'm not? And will you please get out of here? Why? Now, let me tell it to you, Duncan, and tell it to you fast. I'm up to no good and you're just interfering. Get out and leave me alone, once and for all. Aye, once and for all. The relief train will be here soon. I'm glad you're safe. If the old girl doesn't cough up something after all we've done for her, I shall lose my faith in human nature. We've been very kind to her. We've eaten all our meals with her and everything. Oh, I shall miss you all so much. It isn't only that you saved my life. You've all been so wonderful to me. Mm. But it'll be nice for you to get back to your lovely big home and see all your friends again. I haven't any friends or relatives, George Ann. They're all gone. Oh, I'm sorry. But didn't I hear you mention a uh, Mr. Dickey? John Dickey, yes. In America once, when I was a young girl, a long time ago, George Ann, I was engaged to John Dickey. Oh, George Ann, I was so young, I hadn't learned the meaning of faith. And one day, someone told me John Dickey loved someone else. We quarreled. And I spent my whole life regretting that quarrel, hoping that sometime, some way, I would hear from him again. And when I did, it was to learn that he'd gone to England, made a fortune, and died alone, leaving everything to me. Oh, George Ann, one must have faith in the people one loves. One must have faith or go through life alone. I'm sorry you're so alone. George Ann. Yes, Saib? It'll be important in a few minutes, my dear. You better finish whatever you have to do. Well, oh, I, I wish something. I wish there was some way we could see you sometimes in London. George Ann. Oh, no, you couldn't. That lonely old house. George Ann. You couldn't come and stay with me, all of you, and be my guest for a little while? Well, I, I don't know what the Saab would think. He hates so to impose on people. But it wouldn't be imposing. I'll ask him. Mm -hmm. I'll try to persuade him. I'd love to come, just to be with you. Miss Fortune, it's good to see you. Mr. Anstruther, how nice of you to be here. Not at all, Miss Fortune. It's a great pleasure to have you back, safe and well. Mm -hmm. This is Mr. Felix Anstruther, Mr. Dickey's friend and lawyer, and mine. These are my friends, the Carltons. These children saved my life in the wreck. Oh, I'm sure I'm most grateful to them for that. And now, they promise to stay here with me just as long as they can. Really? Here in this house? Uh, Miss Fortune seemed lonely, and we thought we might stay with her a few days. Hmm. That's very considerate of you, I'm sure. Now I'm afraid I must leave for my train. Well, well. Where are you off to? Paris first. Well, I was thinking I might need a lawyer myself pretty soon to manage my affairs. Uh, perhaps on your return. I shall be very happy, Colonel Carlton, to look into your affairs as soon as I return. Good day, Miss Fortune. I'm very sorry indeed, but my business takes me away at this time. I'll see Mr. Anstruther to the door. <laughs> Perhaps we could have a hand or two of poker when you come back. <laughs> bon voyage. Rick, Rick, wake up. No way. Don't be stubborn, Rick. Wake up. Are we packing again? No. I've been thinking and I have everything worked out. Did you work out what happened to the top of my pajamas? Shut up, Rick. I have an idea. Oh. 
Why don't you sit down, Mommy? Oh, oh, I thought I was. Now listen, we've been planning on staying here for a couple of weeks. But where do we go then? Elucidate, my dear. I mean, we can stay forever. All we have to do is to keep on being what she thinks we are. Charming, you mean. No, decent, honest, sober, and hardworking. And just what do you mean by that? I mean, darling, no funny business with the cars, no running up bills, no brandy. And you, Rick, will have to look for a job and take the Saab with you. Oh, really? Sounds too busy. And for what? No sooner do we do all this than she'll up and die and then we're out. Unless... Unless what? Unless she makes a will. Exactly. There's not only the house, there's Mr. Dickey's entire fortune. If we've ever had a chance at a permanent solution, this is it. How cute of you, Georgia. I'm game. I'll be a grandson of the old gal if she kills us both. For the sake of all of you, I am prepared to make any sacrifice. to worry about me, John. I won't be lonely anymore. I found friends. Retired Indian Army officer with no previous business experience seeks important position of trust. <clears throat> Finest social references if desired. Colonel Anthony Carlton, etc., etc. <clears throat> Oh, I say, supposing, supposing some blighter should answer this. Oh, Sigh, what a ghastly idea. I know. Ah, <gasps> uh, sounds good. Well, where shall it be today, Father? Uh, Want to see the mummies again? Oh, mummies are a bit dead, don't you think, for such a beautiful day? Yeah. National Gallery? Painting? <laughs> no. No, it's time, my son. You saw life in the raw. Interesting phenomenon, that. What? That Meccano set. The what? Well, that thing my about. Oh, yeah. There it goes again. But look at all those little fellows down there. On my soul, I don't see what pleasure they get out of it. Still, that little fellow over there looks rather sincere. You think so? Mm. Picks up a sack from that pile, carries it over and puts it on that pile. Mm. And he goes back for another. Well, we must get some enjoyment out of it. But on the other hand, I don't see what he's after in life. I, I, I don't see his reasoning. No reasoning involved, my boy. Instinct, biology, something tells him to carry the little sacks back and forth, and so he has to do it. Uh, I see what you mean. Uh, interesting problem, isn't it? Mm. Capital, labor, classes, masses, no jobs, no leadership. Huh. I wish I were younger, my boy. Lunch. High time, too. A hard morning. I saw your father's advertisement in the newspaper. Oh, of course. I, uh, I do not understand it. Why, it's perfectly clear, isn't it? 
When your father advertises for a position, it is not clear, George John. In fact, it is very, very suspicious. I, I do not like the look of it. Why not? The Saab wants a position, and... What are you doing in this house, anyway? Miss Fortune was grateful to us for helping her in the wreck. So she invited us to stay with her. She's lonely. She must also be very rich. And now I think you'd better go. I'm terribly busy, and... Uh... You're also terribly fidgety, George John. Fidgety? What a silly idea. And now you're toozling your hair. I'm not toozling my hair. And now you're losing your temper, George John. I told you I, I, I'm simply busy, and... And I, I wish you'd please go. I will as soon as you tell me why your father advertised for a position. Because he wants one. He's out all day looking for one, every day. He's a well-known Elgin, the captain of Lundra's Elgin. Is that you, Saab? Yes, my dear. Did you have a successful day, darling? Very successful, yes. Enjoyed the digging very much. Richard couldn't tear himself away. <laughs> oh, uh, oh uh, you remember Mr. McRae? Well, well, upon my soul. Delighted to see you again, my boy. What did you say the name was? Uh, McRae. Duncan McRae. Oh, yes, I, I understand you have been looking for a position, sir. Uh, you've yes. been looking all over London, haven't you, sir? I'm not ashamed to admit it. Not a stone unturned. Ready to accept anything. Anything. Forget dignity and all that, you know. Soldiers trained to take the bad with the good. And uh, vice versa. Perhaps I can be of service, then. Uh, I have found you an excellent position, sir. I beg your pardon? You see, I, I happen to run across your advertisement. Indeed. But, uh, but that's wonderful, isn't it, Saab? What is the position? It's with a motor company run by friends of mine. They need salesmen. Your father seems to have all the necessary qualifications. Uh, no previous business experience. Finest social references. Oh, I think that's splendid, Duncan. Just one moment. I can't tell you how we appreciate Just it. Just a minute, dear. And now poor Sai won't have to keep oh! going. Very friendly of you, my boy, very. But I'm afraid my capacities are entirely unsuited. Oh, Saab, you know you have capacities for anything. In that case, sir, if you will report at the Wombat sales room at 9 o'clock in the morning. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. I do not believe your father has any intention of taking the position at all. Why, what an amusing idea. I do not think you're amused, and I do not think you're grateful. Well, if you really want to know what I think, Duncan, I think now that you know where we live, it would be very nice if you'd stay away from here altogether. Aye, once and for all. Insolent young puppy. I detest him, always muddling things up. But you're going to take the job, Saab. What? George Ann, you promised me that under no circumstances would I have to go to work. Sorry, darling. But now we have to prove we're on the level to everyone. And stop toozling your hair! Trapped by Gad! Nine o'clock? I'm afraid so, Sahib. Well, I'll, I'll never forget the present days we've spent. We never did half the things we planned to do. Too late now, I'm afraid. I wish... I wish we could at least have got to the aquarium. Some future time, perhaps. Never know. Well... It won't be the same without you, Sahib. Nice of you to say so, my boy. It's you, too. <laughs> Not much good at farewell. I know, Father. I... I'll walk a little nearer with you. Thank you, my boy. <laughs> Goodbye, my boy. Goodbye, Father. Don't be too lonely. I'll try. Well, better go in. What is inside? Um, tell your mother, my boy. Tell your mother.
sure you're quite comfortable? Quite comfortable. Do you mind? You planning to stay long? I hadn't. Now that I see you again... You've never seen me before. I've seen you all my life. It's in my dreams. That's not a very good line. No. Well, you see, I'm so darn tired. Why come to me? Well, I was walking along and suddenly an unseen spirit grabbed me by the arm and led me straight up here to you. It's kismet. Now, you think that means we have to marry each other? If you're not otherwise engaged, of course. I do not. And I can't make up my mind whether you're a lunatic or merely very young. I'm neither. I'm just lonely. I see. What can you do besides look rather too good looking? Well, I, uh, I'm a champion swimmer, a rattling good game of tennis, fair golf, and I rumble like the angel Gabriel. Did you happen to notice the name of this organization? No, to be frank with you, I never had a job before, and I felt it might spoil my, my impulse. This is the British American Civil and Hydraulic Engineering Company. Oh, I see. And uh, you're the American, huh? Well, don't, don't hydraulic engineers ever rumble? Rarely, and not well. Oh, it seems to me that I should be filling a crying need. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I really think I'll enjoy working here. I like the atmosphere of the place. The atmosphere is strictly business. Which is what I like. I begin to see what I've missed. You know, if I made up my mind to it, I, I could become an engineer very shortly. And it takes some of them years. Did anyone ever tell you that you had the most... Yes, often. You don't know the first thing about engineering, do you? Oh, what's there to it? It all comes down to one man saying to another man, well, make up your mind. Do you want to buy a bridge or don't you want to buy a bridge? I've never met a man before who's never had a job. I should think it'd intrigue you, make you want to see what you could make of him. All right. We need someone to sort the mail. Two quid a week. Come back in the morning, 8 o'clock. I'm yours to command. Uh, you couldn't make it 9 o'clock, could you? Eight o'clock. Good day. Good day. Oh, could you come out with me later for a spot of supper? I like to pay my obligations. Can you pay for the supper? Huh. Oh, now that you mention it, I'm afraid I can't. I... In that case, I'll wait till your first payday. Good day. Is she pretty? Mm. Come see, come sir. Is she intelligent? Mm, she typewrites well. Is she fun? She's a business gal. Mm, there must be something about her for you to take her out. There is. She's my boss. And it's a very sound policy, my child, to keep in the good graces of one's boss. Has she a lot of money? I've no idea. I rather think not. Guess whom I ran into today? I couldn't possibly imagine. Who? Adela Jennings. Adela? Mm -hmm. She's just arrived in town, wants you to have tea with her. Where's she stopping? The Brits. Well, I must ring her up sometime. Might be a good idea. Perhaps her daddy's not in town. Well, even if he isn't, we're pretty well set now without her. We're not set at all. Certainly we are. The old lady's more in love with us every day. And she's not getting any younger, you know. I haven't heard any talk of a will yet. Fact is, we... I don't think we'll have to wait for a will. She's bound to come through with something soon. She hasn't, though. The aged are slow, my child, just as the young are foolish and impatient. We can count on her, and so... Well, and so we don't need any more Adlers in our lives. Either of us. Do you really believe that, Rick? I do, my child. Um, does this tie look all right? Oh, uh... That's better. Good evening, Sire. Evening, boy. How are all the little wombats feeling tonight? Couldn't feel better than I do. Sold my fourth one this week. Commissions mounting rapidly, my boy, rapidly. Oh, really? Oh. Uh, by the way, Sire, where would you take a young lady to dine? Savoy, by all means. Soundest cuisine in London. 
Well, I don't know. I had in mind a place... No that... nonsense. Savoy is the only place that I'll let it. Don't give it another thought. All right, Savoy it shall be. Oh, but um, a couple of quid wouldn't see me through, would it? <laughs> Perhaps you're being slightly optimistic. You couldn't lend me a fiver till next payday, could you? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I'm glad to, my boy, but I've always found that borrowing is unsound, both from a financial and a moral point of view. How much money will you get your next payday? Two pounds. And from that, you expect to pay me back five? <laughs> you must see there's no future to such a cause of action. Neither a borrower nor a lender be. Why don't you take the lady to the zoo? All right, Cyb, all right, never mind. Here, here, boy. Enjoy your evening. Stick at the Savoy and the zoo. <laughs> Oscar, I'd like to present Miss Leslie Saunders, my boss. Oh. oh, you really must forgive Oscar. He's a sensitive, lonely, disillusioned soul. You seem to have a strong sympathy for Oscar. You don't happen to feel anything in common with him. Mm, there might be a few similarities. Mm, he's very well dressed. Thank you. Quite amusing. Thank you. And I'm afraid utterly worthless. Not your sort. I rather doubt it. Mm -hmm. Although I wonder if you have any idea what sort I really am. Of course I have. Sane, practical. That's right. Ambitious, hardworking. That's right. Utterly moral. Utterly. Straight from the shoulder. Straight as a rivet. Well, in that case, I should think you'd greatly admire me if I skipped all the approach work and just kissed you without any preliminaries. I should not only admire you, I should respect you. Well, something to be said for your philosophy. <laughs> Oh, here go my cigarettes. That's all right, I'll buy you some more. I'm indebted to Oscar. Uh, light on them. Seven. No Trump. Well, I pass. I pass. Me too. I... I think it's a lay me down. Oh, well, upon my soul. What an amazing pupil. What card sent. <laughs> Another grand slam. You must be the kind of person one is warned against on ships. <laughs> on ships? Uh, mommy means... People who play cards dishonestly. Oh. Have you ever known any such people? <clears throat> I'm glad to say that I've never had the bad fortune to encounter any of those miserable scoundrels. I should think they must be most unhappy. Unhappy, ma'am? Don't you think so? It seems to me they must always be outside of everything. They must be so lonely, so friendless. Very possible, ma'am. Very possible. It's way past your bedtime, Miss Fortune. Oh. Another beautiful evening. Good night, my dear. Good night, Miss Ellen. God bless you. Don't bother to come upstairs, dear. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Darling, is your old sinus trouble coming on again? Sinus? No, my dear, no. All part of the act, you know, letting the old girl see that I was touched. 
Good performance, darling. You certainly had me fooled for a minute. Myself, take off my shoesy woozy. Mm. I'll help you. You've helped him enough. <laughs> I take off my own shoesy woozies. Very considerate of you, Rick. First, my shoesy woozy, then my socksy waxy, then. my tie, the wisey. I give you my word of honor, Georgiana. I haven't the slightest you idea. You did it on purpose. I did not. How could I know that one bottle of champagne and a few small brandies could make any grown man drunk? Why did you give him anything at all? I tell you, I just happened to meet him and we'd, we'd celebrate it. Celebrate it? With him? You said you wouldn't be seen dead with him. You must be drunk, too. I'm not. I can't be. None of us McCrae's is capable of being drunk. We've tried. And I admit I was wrong about Richard. I misjudged him entirely and I apologize. He's an understanding and gifted young man. And where did you meet this understanding and gifted young man? We just bumped into each other. If you want to know the truth, I, I was feeling lonesome. You're a bad-mannered, bad-tempered, outrageous female. But I have discovered I cannot live without you. It's a shameful confession for a sane man to make. It's an idiotic one. Because you're going to live without me. Probably to a horrible old age. I am not. Richard says you're eating your heart out for me. Richard told you that? He did. Then you got him drunk and made him say it. If you were a man, I'd knock you down for that. Oh, I'm dreadfully sorry. We must have awakened you. Poor Richard has been taken ill, and, and this, this Mr. McRae was kind enough to bring him home. How do you do, Mr. McRae? How do you do? That, that's not the exact truth, Miss Fortune. Poor Richard is extremely drunk, and it is my fault. And now, if you've said everything you want to say, you might have the decency to go. Listen, George John, don't quarrel with me. I may have to go away. There's a chance I may leave for India. Is it only a chance or a hope? Oh, my dear, my dear. I trust you will accept my apology, Miss Fortune, if I have disturbed you. You haven't disturbed me, Mr. McRae. If you have the slightest consideration for anyone, you'll go away and stay away. Aye, once and for all. <laughs> Oh, my dear, my dear. The young people are so foolish. They don't know that love never comes twice. Does it hurt much? My, uh, my head is on wrong. I know just how you feel. Oh, I've been intoxicated, too. You have? I was quite a young girl, but I've never forgotten it. It was at a birthday party. Somebody gave me a glass of punch, and then the trees started going round and round. I know. <laughs> Wasn't there anyone there to put ice on your head? No. Oh. But there was a boy there who was very kind to me. It was John Dickey. He let me hold his hand tight to keep me from being flung into space. Well, that was darn decent of him. Yes, he was a very nice boy. And he had a little white dog with him. She had a black spot, like an enormous eyebrow over one eye. <laughs> 
Sounds like a very nice little doggy. It was. Does your head feel better? Mm, much. I say, don't think. Please don't think badly of me. Why should I think badly of you? You were only being gay and happy and proud, perhaps, of your job. And most of all, young. <laughs> Ah, oh. oh, I'm very sorry, my boy, but you won't do either. Goodbye. Well, how's a bloke going to know what you want if you don't tell him what you want? Now you just trot out some more. I'll, I'll know it when I see it. I wish people would make their minds up. <laughs> This one's a darling, Richard. Ah, uh, but he's not vivacious. Well, he's just sleepy. Well, the dog I want must be vivacious and sleepy. Besides, he's cross-eyed. You're mad. His eyes are as straight as mine. Ah, oh, Hazel. You're difficult to please. On the contrary, I like Hazel. <laughs> Here they are, then. The last of the lot, sir. Take him and leave him. Ah, uh, leave him. No reflection on you fellas, of course. Blimey, what do you expect a dog to have? I expect him to have an enormous black eyebrow over one eye. What? An enormous black eyebrow? I think, Richard, we'd better go quietly and try somewhere else. Mm, all right. Sorry. I suppose he must have a purple tail, too. And why a black eyebrow? Well, because the puppy is for Miss Ellen, and Miss Ellen likes puppies with black eyebrows. Are you sure this Miss Ellen of yours is quite right? Oh, yes, quite. She's a very nice, rich old lady. I see. You and your family couldn't by any chance be uh, bunting on her, could you? What makes you think that? It just occurred to me. Wouldn't approve of that, I suppose. No, I wouldn't approve of that. No, I, I didn't think you would. Would you like to hear the rest of it? It's up to you. It's a tremendous secret, you know. Perhaps you shouldn't tell me, then. I probably shouldn't. You won't like it. Well, they say that um, confession is good for the... Um, what is it? The soul, Richard. Oh, yes, the soul. The soul yeah. Well, I suppose it can't affect me much one way or the other, can it? <laughs> you see, we're all trying to become heirs. I don't understand. It's, it's very simple. You see, we're really all quite charming. And we made the whole gal love us. The sob took to selling wombats just to prove that we were on the square, and I took to opening letters for the same reason. Rather neat idea, don't you think? You're not kidding me, Richard. Oh, no, I'm, I'm terribly serious. We thought we'd worked it out rather cleverly. <laughs> I never doubted that you were clever, Richard. Just getting her warmed up, ma'am. <laughs> oh, why didn't Miss George Ann come? This would have cheered her up so. Now, do you want to see what a wombat will really do, ma'am? Yes, yes. <laughs> you mustn't hit anything when we're going this fast, darling. It might be dangerous. Not at all, my dear, not at all. I'm afraid I have won again, Miss George Ann. You have to have a scientific mind. Mr. Dickey didn't have a scientific mind either. <laughs> now, who can that be sticking his nose in? Who 
was it, Andrew? Oh, it was only that young Mr. McRae. Mr. McRae? Yes. Why didn't you let me know? Uh, uh, he was calling on Miss Fortune. Oh. I told him you were in, but he said he only wanted to see Miss Fortune. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, would you care for another game, Miss George? Uh, not just now. Thank you, Andrew. Jane of Aylesbury, and her father's a champion. You, know. you get this horrible monster out of here before Miss Ellen comes home. Well, but she's for Miss Ellen. I got her for Miss Ellen. And I'm paying for it out of my own salary. Think of that. Oh, how wonderful of you, Rick. Are you sure she wants one? Sure. <laughs> My salary's too small to waste if I weren't sure. Oh, of course. I thought for a moment... Well, good work, Rick. Congratulations. Oh, I... I didn't mean... What, Rick? What didn't you mean? Well, I mean... Well, I didn't want you to think I was getting soft all of a sudden. Heaven forbid I should ever think that. Now, look, you stay here and Jane and I will lurk about upstairs and be a frightful surprise to everyone. You won't have to try much. <laughs> Hello, Mommy. <laughs> Richard getting dynamic? Oh, darling, he's such a marvelous time. The wombat went like a bird. Did you have a good time all by yourself? What have you been doing all day? I had four hair-raising games of dominoes with Andrew. The whole countryside is just one big garden. I picked and picked and picked. Did you have a good time all by yourself here? What have you been doing all day, darling? I played dominoes with Andrew. Masses of wildflowers. We saw the most adorable little cottage. Miss Ellen was mad about it. Did you have a good time all by yourself? What have you been doing all day? Why didn't you play a game of dominoes with Andrew? Ah, heavens! Ah, what in heaven's name is that? That, I imagine, is Richard and Jane being a terrific surprise to all of us. Jane! It can't be very amusing for a young girl to be spending so much time with such an old lady. And oh, my dear, I'm frightened. Frightened, Miss Ellen? Now that you're all doing so well, I'm frightened. You'll want to go away and make a home of your own. Would you rather we didn't go? Oh, my dear, if I only knew you'd be with me when... I'd never be afraid again. We'll stay with you as long as you want us. Oh, if you could only promise me that. I promise. Did you get the old lady to bed, darling? Yes. She made me promise that we'd never leave her. Sometimes, Georgia, I don't know where you get all your cleverness. <laughs> Certainly not from me. I guess the Saab has more brains than I ever realized. I don't know that we've been so clever, though, Mommy. We haven't been getting on very far with the will. I'm beginning to think perhaps we should give up the whole idea. George, Anne! Well, I just mean, well, 
We might get along better if we thought up some other plan. But this is a lovely plan, and we're getting along beautifully. Poor darling, you're discouraged. You've worked so hard on it. But it'll come through. We'll get the old lady yet. All right, Mommy. Forgive me. Forgive her? Now what does she think she did? sales on Monday. Saturday night? Well, that's that's very kind of you, but well, I seldom go to parties nowadays. Well, if you're sure George John will not be unpleasantly surprised, I, I promise to stay away from her once and for all. Well, since you're certain, I'll be glad to come. And, and it's very, very kind of you to ask me. Good day, Miss Fortune. I told you an hour ago I didn't need you any longer. Oh, that's all right. I just had a little reading to do. Take you home? I think not, thank you. It's all right. Why, well, say, you uh, wouldn't like to do the town, would you, with Miss Fortune and the Carlton family on Saturday night? Quite time. Are you paying for the party? No. No, a small white dog with a large black eyebrow is about all I can afford for several weeks. How is Jane? Oh, terrific. Several slippers have gone west, and some of Mr. Dickey's antique rugs have aged perceptibly, but <laughs> I couldn't live without her. Did she make your uh, Miss Ellen happy? Oh, immensely. She's mad about her, really. Then Jane is what you might call a wise investment. As a matter of fact, I think Jane will do the trick. Congratulations. I knew you'd be interested. Good night. <laughs> Pardon my curiosity. What are you reading? Oh, this? Just something I picked up. I'm trying to find out why grown men waste their time being engineers. When they can be heirs? Exactly. But the way the boss said the suggestions you made for the new building were not half bad for an amateur. Did he not really? Of course, that doesn't mean anything to you. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's always nice to make an impression on the boss. Mm -hmm. Well, good night. I suppose you think I couldn't be an engineer if I wanted to. Well, there wouldn't be any point to it, would there? You'll be able to buy and sell engineers one day. Mm, yes, I suppose you're right. On second thought, I think I will go to the party with you Saturday. Is the invitation still open? Still open? Oh, it's you or no one. I have an idea about you, but it still needs just a little more work. <laughs> Good night. Good night. This type of motor uses a delayed combustion design or method. And uh, that means exactly, uh, well, putting it quite simply, sir, that means that the cylinder head is recessed to receive the patented shaped piston, which closes off the valve area from the combustion chamber. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, if I were to say that the wombat is the last word in mechanical perfection, I should be withholding the full truth. The wombat is above mechanical perfection. 
One that is ahead of its time. As far ahead of its time as was, um, well, Socrates of his. Yes. <laughs> Pretty thing, isn't it? Yes. Oh, yes. Well, Colonel Carlton, I believe in you, and I'd like to put in my order for three of them. Oh, yes. One for myself, and one for my wife, and uh, one for my, uh, well, uh... I understand perfectly, sir. I shall deliver the third one to you personally at your club. Oh, that's fine, Colonel. Fine. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Colonel Carlton. Uh, yes, Mr. Hutchins? I would like to have a word with you. Always a pleasure and a privilege to chat with the managing director of our company, Mr. Hutchins. Colonel Carlton, I have always made it my custom to know the men who represent the Wombat, to look into their past records. Uh, past records, sir? Records aren't always quite fair and all that. You... On the contrary, Colonel, I think your record does you full justice. All I can say, sir, is that since I've been with the Wombat, I've done my best. Uh, sometimes, an executive's position involves unpleasant duties. Yes, I, I quite understand, sir. On the other hand, sometimes those duties are a distinct pleasure. This is one of those pleasurable occasions. The board has decided that a man of your obvious talent is wasted as a mere salesman. We are very anxious that you should become our London sales manager. Take charge of this entire branch. I, I trust that will be agreeable to you. Oh, uh, well, I, I, of course, I... Of course, a I suitable know, adjustment yes. to recompense, of course. Uh, well, I've no doubt we can come to terms with that, didn't uh, Oh, and uh, by the way, uh, some of the members of the board are very anxious to meet you. Oh, naturally, naturally. I'm giving a little dinner party at my house on Saturday night. I hope you can be there. Be delighted. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm afraid not. Not Saturday night, no. An old friend of mine has been very kind to me. I'm giving a little party that night, and I, I wouldn't like to disappoint her. How about any other night? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, oh, well, Thursday? Yes, yes, yes. Some other time. Good night. Good night. So, uh, by the way, may I, may I suggest that you take things a bit easier? Mm. <laughs> oh, we can't afford to lose you, you know. Oh, <laughs> indeed, no, indeed, no, sir. Furthermore, Miss Fortune, I discovered that your Colonel Carlton is not even a colonel. He's nothing but a common adventurer and a card sharper. He and his family are well known on the continent as fortune hunters. They were last heard of when the son nearly took in a wealthy young American girl. They were asked to leave. How sad. Sad? That such fine people should be reduced to such an existence. How cruel life must have been to them. But you don't understand, Miss Fortune. They're not fine people. They're little better than criminals. And they're in your house now, living on you, sponging on you. Who knows what plans they may have against you? Now I understand so many things that used to puzzle me. Little glances they exchanged. Little embarrassments they had. Times when they were hurt. And I never understood why. Oh, I wish I had known sooner. I could have spared them so much. But you must get rid of them, Miss Fortune. They'll take everything you have. Oh, I'm an old woman, Mr. Anstruther. A very old woman who has led a lonely, useless life. But I've learned some things in my loneliness. Perhaps because of it. I've learned not to judge people. I've learned to take them as I find them, not as others find them. And most of all, I've learned to give complete and unquestioning faith to the people I love. I shall say no more, then. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Anstruther? How do you do? Did you have a pleasant trip? Very pleasant and very interesting. Good evening, Miss Carlton. Oh, come in, my dear. I just saw Mr. Anstruther. I didn't know he was back from his trip. Oh, yes. Sit down, won't you, dear? 
I've just had a long talk with Mr. Anstruther. I've realized for some time how much I've been imposing upon you and your family. Why, oh, not at all. I've wondered what can they possibly gain by giving so much to a lonely old lady. Oh, and finally I've decided to do at least everything that is in my power to do. But, but we don't want you to do anything. I'm sure of that. But I want you to know that I have asked Mr. Anstruther to draw up a new will so that when I die, everything I have will come to you and your family. It isn't at all what I would like to leave you, George Ann. I would like to leave you happiness. Oh, Miss Ellie. She's very well known in Algy to the girl of Mandalay. He's a captain of Lancer's Algy. He's bold, he's brave, he's hey. George Ann, do you know what your father is? Yes, I think I know. Nonsense, my dear, you couldn't know, and it just happened. He's been made the headmost sales manager of the entire London branch. Mm. Yeah, what do you think of that, George Ann? Making money on his own and everything. Oh, tut, tut. Not big money, of course. But an impressive step, if I do say so myself. <laughs> of course it is. It's just what we need to convince the old lady. Just think how pleased she'll be. She'll think we're all wonderful. She'll think we're wonderful, all right. She does now. In fact, you don't even have to go on with it, Saeb. We've won. Whatever do you mean? She's decided on her will. We're to get the money. She's going to leave us everything she has. How too, too marvelous. Aren't you going to compliment George Ann Sire? She did most of it. Oh, so she did, my dear. Very good. <laughs> Excellent work. Wonderful. Now we're all set. Yes, we're, we're set at last. So now, let's plan our party. It can be a celebration now. We'll have a wonderful time. Going to India, eh? Well, well that's my old stamping ground. Let's give you some letters of introduction, my boy. Ah, India, India. Richard and George Ann were born there, you know. They were? Yes, poor dears, they were born there. Such an awful place. I've never been there myself, but they've told me about it. That's very astonishing. Oh, don't mind, Mommy. She has little lapses like that. Nothing dangerous. Perhaps we'd better dance. Father, a shy young fellow, what? I'm sure I've seen him about somewhere. Never forget a face, you know. Your whole family are rather complex, aren't they? Oh, yes. Well, take me, for example. I'm probably the most complex character I know. Really? Really. Richard. Hmm? Why did you ask the boss yesterday to recommend a night school in engineering? Oh, that? Oh. I just did that to impress him. Clever of me, what? But why did you want to impress him? You're going to give up your job as soon as you get Miss Fortune's money, aren't you? Huh. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. You won't need a job. No, but... Is your father going to give up his job? <laughs> The sob give up his wombats. He fails manager in the place. Well, if your father's going to continue toiling among the wombats and you're going to spend your young life in an engineering office, well, it just doesn't make sense, does it? With the will and all that. Doesn't it? Well, it doesn't to me. It looks like a slight contradiction. <laughs> well, it does rather, come to think of it, doesn't it? What do you suppose is wrong? You. You aren't hard-boiled enough for an heir, and you might as well face it. You think so? I wonder. Come on, Richard, let's dance. Permit me to say, ma'am, that you dance exquisitely. It is a beautiful dance, isn't it? With you, ma'am, it's a poem. They've made up. Oh, I'm so glad. Who? George Ann and that nice Mr. McRae. Oh, yeah. I've loved you for a long time, yes, but but that doesn't mean I'm going to marry you. But why? 
You really want to know? All right. All right, then. Your suspicions about us were right, Duncan. We didn't love the old lady. And we didn't stay with her because she was lonely. We were after her money right from the start. And that night you came to the house, I was afraid you'd spoil everything. I was afraid to even have you about. But you're not afraid now. No, because now she's come through. Now we're going to get her money. Oh, we're all rotters, Duncan. We always have been and we always will be. We're parasites. We, we cheat at cards and we lie about ourselves. And the only time we behave like decent people is when it pays. Such a long speech, darling, and I don't believe a word of it. I don't care what you thought you were up to. I don't care what you think you are. I want to marry you. Oh, no, Duncan. I'm not turning noble, but, but I won't mess up your life. Once I wouldn't marry you because you weren't rich enough for me. And now I won't marry you because I'm not good enough for you. She's fainted. So they must keep calm, you know. Old ladies liable to this sort of thing. Fluff's coming off in your trousers. They say if you hold a puppy by the tail, its eyes will drop out. That's guinea pigs. Oh. Is Andrew there? Andrew. Uh, I'm here. She wants you to telephone for Mr. Anstruth. He's to hurry. Is she? We don't know yet. She's barely conscious, Miss Georgia. She sent for Anne Strother. Oh, sir, I'm so ashamed. My dear. Rick. What? Do you think she's going to die? Do you care if she dies, Rick? Well, I'm rather used to the old gal. She's not so bad, really. We're horrible people, aren't we? Hard as nails, all of us. Don't you think people ever change? Not us, ever. We just aren't any good. I think I am. Don't be tired. I think Saab is. He's, he's changed. I suppose you think I have, too. I'm about as much changed as Mommy is. We've been acting so long, you think we're changed. But you're fooling yourself, Rick. Like Duncan. You wait and see. We'll be back to normal. You and the Saib, too. Wish her luck, little Jane. How is she? I'm Miss Fortune's lawyer, not her doctor. She will inform you at the proper time. Since I am her lawyer, however, there is a little matter that may perhaps interest you. Miss Fortune's one thought, despite her grave condition, has been to live long enough to set her signature to a new will. This she has done. I need not inform you as to the identity of the new legatees. I might add, however, that if certain circumstances had been different, I should have advised Miss Fortune most strongly in favor 
of a more impersonal charity. As it is, it makes little difference. What are you trying to tell us? In the past few years, there has been a steady depreciation in the value of Miss Fortune's holdings. I did not wish to worry Miss Fortune in her late years by telling her this, because I thought that things might be managed for her alone. If Miss Fortune dies, taking debt and taxes into account, the estate will be practically penniless. I trust you will find it possible to forgive her. Why should we forgive her, Mr. Anstruther? That's a strange thing you're asking of us. And pray, what is there to forgive? Wasn't she good to us? As to the money, we don't want it. We don't even need it. Absolutely not. We're perfectly able to stand on our own feet. Indeed. Then perhaps I might add that if Miss Fortune lives, I doubt that I shall be able even to save this house for her. If Miss Fortune lives, Mr. Anstrom, you may rest assured there will be a home for her always. She will not need this house. If I've misjudged you, I beg your pardon. Good day. Oh, Mommy, you do love her. Yeah. Darling. We don't want the money. We don't want it, none of us. Yeah, darling. Oh, and we really want to be what she thinks we are. Mommy, she mustn't die. We've got to show her. We've got to take care of her. She's saving, Mommy, don't you see? She saved us all. You may come in now. Miss Fortune wants to see you. She seems to be very much stronger. When we get around that bend, I'll show you what the wombat can really do. Indeed. That's the best curry I've tasted since India. Then, Canada. You know, Mrs. McRae, I wonder if we ought to go to India. Will you please stop talking about India? One stand for O. This day, this sun, this purple veil, why were they planned with what in view but for the setting of our love? Such lovely lines, Richard, but such old ones to use on your own wife. <laughs> Here we are at my new home. Hasn't this been a wonderful drive? Yes, indeed. And I firmly agree with the words of Abraham Lincoln, that great American, or British extraction, of course, who said, you can fool some of the people all of the time, and all of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all of the people all of the time. <laughs> I give you Mr. Lincoln. Ah, yes. Mr. Lincoln. <laughs> Mr. Lincoln and the Sars were old friends. Indeed. Oh, perhaps it was another Mr. Lincoln. Now I would like to propose a toast to my family. God bless them. One and all. <laughs> 